Hello there everyone. So in this video I'm going to be doing something a little different from what you're all traditionally used to on this channel. But before we get into what we're actually going to be doing today, I just want to quickly address a few things. Firstly, the audio and video quality on this video are going to be substantially worse than they would be normally. Because for this video I need to show you guys footage on my main phone, which I have here. And my main phone is what I use to record videos. So I'm actually using an older phone from about four or five years ago, depending on when you're watching this. So that explains why the video quality maxed out 720p instead of 1080p. And why the audio probably sucks. Second point. The PlayStation 2 video that was meant to come out in November, but I had to delay because of personal reasons, is being worked on. It will come out sometime Hopefully in January of 2021. Hopefully it'll be out before the end of January. I'm hoping that's I'm hoping I can get that done. And third, for this video I will be showing you footage from an emulator. And some people are immediately gonna say, hey, that's just piracy. Can't doesn't own the game originally. Well, the game we're gonna be using in this video is Pokemon Yellow. And just here is a legit copy that I have owned for many years now in the box for said copy of said game and yes the glare is annoying but it's needed to show this off properly so it's the flash on this it's just you know it made it look better when I'm actually showing the footage so you have to live with it for a minute or so but anyway so I have a legitimate copy of Pokemon Yellow so let's get on to what we're actually talking about today if the camera could focus that would be nice there we go so what I'm going to be showing you guys is what's known as a glitch Pokemon. Now, glitch Pokemon are essentially, this goes for all the Pokemon games. It's basically when the game is fed garbage data and the game treats it like it's a Pokemon encounter. The most famous glitch Pokemon is Missing No, which is present in the first generation of games. That's not what I'm gonna be showing you. Everybody knows about that, it's well documented. What I'm gonna be doing is, I'm going to be showing a glitch Pokemon that goes by the name of 4-4. Or sometimes called 44, but I'll explain why you shouldn't call it 44 later. This glitch Pokemon is very fascinating to me, and there's not a lot of information on it. So, I'm going to be basically showing off a bunch of stuff that I found out while I was experimenting with this. The inspiration of this video was me watching a really old YouTube series by a YouTuber called Missing No Expert, who basically no longer exists anymore, which is a shame because his videos were great. But I was re-watching his series called Let's Glitch Pokemon Yellow, and he briefly encounters this Pokemon, and then explains that it just crashes the game instantly, which you shall see in a moment. But, before we get to 4-4 itself, there's a glitch that's involved that I need to show you beforehand. This is called the Long Range Trainer Glitch, sometimes known as the Mew Glitch, and sometimes known as the Ditto Glitch. So basically, you start in Cerulean City, which is where I walked up from, and you come up here to this route. Now, down here, there's this trainer, right? Now, he can see you at maximum distance. So, if I was to walk down right now, he would see me. The way this glitch works is, we basically escape this trainer as we go to fight him. So I press down and I immediately hit start. Like that. This brings up the menu. You shouldn't be able to do this. You can't do this in any other game. And now what we're going to do is, we are going to fly. And you can go anywhere, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to Pewter City because all we have to do right now is fight a trainer. You'll know you did the glitch right if you see the exclamation mark appear above the trainer's head. Now, I'm pressing the start button here, you can't see it, but um, this is the start button here. It's not doing anything. That's because our menu is disabled, because the game basically thinks we are in a Pokemon battle, or a trainer battle. Because that's what's meant to happen, but we interrupted that. So now we are going to basically get our start menu to work again by fighting a trainer. Now, I've barely played anything in this game, so the first trainer in the first gym is available. Now, you can't walk directly in front of them, otherwise the game will soft lock. So I'm going to walk up to this guy from here, and I'm just going to quickly fight him. I'm just going to speed through this, because it's just a random trainer fight. So we take, take out the trainer. And then we can leave this place. Come out here. And now, in Pokemon Yellow, what we do next is we need to fly to Cinnabar Island. Right? So, we're going to go to Cinnabar Island quickly. And we walk along here and up 
along here to the Pokemon Mansion. So we go in here, and now we're going to find a Ditto. And hopefully not run into a million wild Pokemon. That'd be nice. So we go along here, in here, up these stairs over here. Then we go down here. Press this switch one time. Then we head down. We're going to want to go down here. Then we're going to want to head down here. And we're going to want to go down these stairs over here and run into a grimer. That's great. Not really. We don't like that. Right. And now that we're here, what you want to do is you want to find a ditto. Now, I have actually got save state saved for this, so that I don't have to go through the process of actually showing you guys where, how to find it. It took me forever, right? So, you find your ditto down here in this floor. You just keep running around, you'll find a ditto eventually. It's 10% encounter rate. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the game what we want to encounter. And the way we do that is using the Mew Glitch. And the Mew Glitch takes the special stat of the Pokemon that you last fought. So this Zapdos here has a special stat of 191. And this gives us the Glitch Pokemon 4-4, which is what we want to encounter. So what I'm going to do is, by sending this Zapdos out, I am making the Ditto transform to Zapdos, and he will copy all of my stats. This will mean that the last Pokemon I fought has a special stat of 191. And that is telling the game, send out the Pokemon that corresponds to that value in the hex, because each special stat corresponds to a hex value for a specific Pokemon. So, 4-4 is in the glitched range, so which is between 191 and 199. So, we can then you kill Ditto, or faint it. Then, what you're going to need to do is, you're going to need to come out of here. So, escape rope, out of here. And now, the last place you heal should have been Cerulean to make this easier, but if it wasn't, you can just fly Cerulean. So, we're going to walk up here now. And we're going to go back to the route where we encountered the trainer that we flew away from. So, we walk up here, and the menu pops up by itself. I didn't do that. So now what I'm going to do is, I exit the menu, and an encounter starts. And, this is it. This is 4-4. And you can see there, he immediately crashed the game. Now... That's what happens 99.99999% of the time. Like, almost always, 4-4 will crash your game, which is a shame. But, he's the only glitch Pokemon that really behaves that way. Like, none of the other ones really do that. Right, um, give me a sec. I'm going to load up this state quickly. So, let's just talk about what happened briefly. Usually, glitch Pokemon appear... And they usually just, they're usually fairly stable. Like, some of them have unstable moves, mainly. That's the problem. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna back off this menu because the glare is annoying. But, usually it's the moves that are more unstable than the glitch Pokemon themselves. 4-4 is an exception. It will almost always crash your game. Sometimes it will actually load an encounter, but 4-4 is one of the most bizarre Pokemon ever. It, if you manage to encounter it, it will actually spawn a glitch trainer who will send out stuff like missing no and things like that and the game will inevitably crash there is a way you could get it to get like play super long corrupted cry which is about 12 minutes long similar to what missing no can do sometimes in yellow version but that's very rare it's only been done once that i know of officially so usually glitch pokemon just exists as a big scrambled block of sprite right it's, it doesn't resemble anything it's just a mess 4-4 has a very unusual sprite. That's what causes the game to crash. The sprite itself, that huge massive thing, usually they're not that big, and usually they are just like big glitchy boxes, but not quite that big. 4-4's sprite is so large that it overflows the game's RAM, and it floods over into the SRAM, which is where the sound is kept. That's usually why the sound cuts out, and that's what le can lead to the corrupted cry thing that I talked about earlier. And as 4-4 exists in the game, it corrupts things more and more as you, as the encounter goes on, and it will inevitably lead to a crash. Usually what happens is, since it corrupts the sound RAM, it will point to a sound bank that doesn't exist anymore because 4.4 corrupted it, and that's what caused the game to crash. So, there are many misconceptions about 4.4. People usually think that it's that big glitch Pokemon that you can never encounter and it always crashes your game and there's no way to obtain it legitimately. That's not true, because in this save, 
I actually have it. Now, this one's called A, and I'll explain why in a minute, but if we go along, this is 4A4. When you encounter it, it's 4 apostrophe 4, so it changes its name when you catch it, which is really bizarre. And obviously it doesn't have a sprite, it's weird. Glitch Pokemon usually do that, they don't actually show with a sprite in the menu. But... The way you can get 4-4 is rather simple actually. You basically do exactly what I did, the exact same setup, but in Pokemon Blue or Red, instead of Yellow, and you trade it into Yellow. And the Pokemon in Blue is called A, or Arrow A, which is what I have here. And it's a perfectly stable glitch Pokemon. I mean, it does know a glitch move that will crash the game, but you, you teach it another move, and it instantly, it's fine. So. Now. Once you have 4-4, four, four, the game kind of just, you know, doesn't really care. Like, there is there is the one side effect that a lot of glitch Pokemon have that 4-4 four, four also has, which I will show you in just a sec. I'm just going to run down here, grab an encounter quickly. So, what 4-4 four, four does is it, it can invert your sprites, and I'm not sure if I've corrected it yet. No, I've not. So, your sprites will be reversed or inverted, and that's, so my trainer sprite looks all glitched up, the Pidgey's facing the wrong way. No, I've not got 4-4 four, four at front, of course not. So, Zapdos is all messed up there. So, when you send 4-4 four, four into battle, it will look like this, when it eventually loads. Now have a very long cry. Now, because the camera quality is horrendous, you might not be able to tell, but this is just a literal pure pure black box. You can't see anything. Like, you can't see what moves. If I didn't know what moves I had on this thing, I would not know what I was hitting it with. And yeah, 4-4 four, four is incredibly slow, like absurdly slow. It's not even funny. So I think I just used Bide, which is a terrible move, but I had to teach it something so that it wouldn't, so it wouldn't crash the game every time I send it out. So yeah, um, gonna run. So yeah, that's what 4-4 does. In battle, it's just a pure black box, so it's not entirely useful. It has very unusual stats. It actually has zero base speed. So if you look at speed, for level 17, 6 speed is pretty atrocious. Its special is also dreadful, but its attack and defense are actually pretty decent. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load another state, and I'm going to show you what happens if you send 4-4 four, four out in a fight against a Ditto. So, we've got Zapdos up front, we'll swap out of him in a sec. So, what happens if you get a Pokemon to switch to transform into this monstrosity? Well, the answer is kind of underwhelming. Okay, so he cries forever, he transforms, and nothing happens, he just stays a Ditto. Nothing, nothing interesting there. Right, I'm gonna go back to my main state now. So, Unfortunately, if nothing happens, although if it did, it would just crash the game. So, now, another thing I was really curious about is I wanted to try using 4-4 in a trainer battle. And obviously, the way that I would do this is I would have to obviously do a link battle. Because no other, no trainer will have this, and if a Ditto transforms into it, it doesn't change. So, what I could do here is I can link two games, so I'm going to... Open the game again, and I'm going to load my other state here. Now, this state has 4-4 four, four up front. So I'm going to talk to this person. Yep, I'm going to save the game. Sure. I'm going to switch back to the first one. And I'm going to get into a trade, get into a link battle as well here. Yep. We're going to go to the Coliseum. Right. Now, I'm going to switch back to this game, and this is the file where 4-4 four, four is up front. I want to send in 4-4 four, four first, so that the other trainer, the other me, will see 4-4. Four, four. So, I go here, and then I switch back to this version, and this one doesn't have 4-4 four, four up front. This is Zapdos. So, I go here. Now the game will start a link battle, and this all works fine. Like, the game doesn't have any problem starting a battle, you can send this thing out and no bother. It's just what happens afterwards that's a bit interesting. So, there's me. It's a bit weird because I'm named the same thing in both versions, it's literally the same. So, there we go. Now, if we switch to the other version, everything's completely fine. But I'm going to switch back to the more interesting version. So, what's happened here? 
The Siren is getting corrupted, so I can't do anything. Only the down arrow works. I can only choose between Pokemon and run. Although I can't actually press either of them. So, 4-4 four has came in, he's corrupted the game, and then he crashes it, because that's what he likes to do. So, the game crashes, and that's both games, by the way, both games crash. Although, the, I think the game where you send out 4-4 four four crashes as soon as you use a move, and the game where you see 4-4 four four is, it just crashes as soon as the music decides it's had enough. Because once the music fades out, that means that it's corrupted the game, basically, entirely, and it will crash, so... Obviously, there's no actual harm in it. Like, it, it doesn't harm your game, so far as I know. Like, I'm not. It's not like it wipes out your save or anything. It just it corrupts it temporarily. The game shuts off. It crashes, and then it's all restored when you reload your save. So that's basically all I wanted to say about 4-4. But I do want to just briefly touch upon a few more glitch Pokemon facts quickly, shall we say? So I'm gonna put this aside for now. Actually, no, I'm not because. I mean, even terrible gameplay is more interesting than sitting looking at nothing, I guess, so... I'm just gonna head out here, and... I don't honestly know what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna walk around. But anyway, so... The reason that glitch Pokémon exist in the first place in this game is because... Basically, programming oversights, like... The game isn't really... Programmed very well, like, imagine this game... I have not discovered anywhere on this safe, right? This game is programmed incredibly poorly. Like, it's just a fact. It just is. That's why stuff like this is allowed to happen. So. Glitch Pokemon basically are collections of garbage data that the game treats as wild Pokemon encounters. This happens with Pokemon. It happens with trainers. It happens with a lot of different things. Like, you can get glitch items, glitch trainers, glitch Pokemon. All kinds of things. You can actually, there's actually a glitch that allows you to walk through walls, but it takes a while to set up and I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to do that quickly because I want to go to Vermilion City. And not press that. Oh, okay. The game decided it would walk for me. Okay, so I crashed. Anyway, so. A glitch Pokemon is basically a collection of garbage data. We said that, right? So, it has been confirmed that originally, Game Freak wanted to put in 190 Pokemon into... The original Generation 1 games. And when you look at the actual hex for the game, and the Pokemon table specifically, it kind of, you can kind of see that. Like, it, you can kind of see that that is what they were going for, because there are 151 Pokemon in this game, right? Bulbasaur up to Mew. Mew is obviously an Easter egg in this game, but regardless, there is 150 Pokemon 151 Pokemon that you can obtain in this game. Right, now in Saffron, okay. So, you can get 151 Pokemon. But there are 39 different forms of Missing No. And Missing No is basically... He is a glitch Pokemon, but he's not really the same as all the other ones. He is different from the other glitch Pokemon. Oh, that's right. Oh, I can just go through anyway. Nice, okay. Right. So anyway. Missing No is more of an error handler than a glitch Pokemon. And I soft locked. This this happens. This guy keeps soft locking me. I think it's because of the walkthrough walls, I don't know. But anyway. So Missing No is basically the game is doing exactly what it should. The game is doing what it's programmed to do. It's just you did something that you weren't supposed to do, and the game didn't expect you to do. So I'm going to avoid this train this time, right, because we've got Abra. So. Missing No will appear when you encounter one of the invalid hex values that are actually filled. Because some of them are actually filled with Missing No specifically, so that in the event that you actually manage to encounter one of the missing hex identifiers, something would appear and the game wouldn't crash. Missing no basically prevents the game from crashing. Unless you play Pokemon Yellow, which crashes every five minutes. I have no idea why. I don't know why he does that. But... Red and blue missing no basically is just an error handler. So is yellow missing no, but he's weird. So... He will not crash your game. He will not damage your game. He will just corrupt your Hall of Fame a little bit. But I think all the Glitch Pokemon do that. But the Hall of Fame is not really that important, so... You know, he'll live. But... 
When, even when, even things like missing no, duplicating your items in your bag, that's, that's the game trying to register missing no in your Pokedex, but since there isn't technically a spot for it, it kind of just, you know, has a fit and tries to store it somewhere. And that ends up duplicating the item in your bag, in the sixth slot of your bag by 128, unless you already have 128. So, there are 151 Pokemon and there are 39 different species of missing it, which adds to 190. But the way 8-bit games worked were, dif were different from, like, you know, you would expect, right? You couldn't just make 190 and have it be like that. The Pokemon encounters had to be stored in an 8-bit bank, right? And that would mean there would have to be 256 Pokemon to fill out the bank entirely. They could either have gone for a smaller bank, which would mean they would add only being able to put in 128 Pokemon, or they could have made the bigger 256-byte Pokemon. 256 bytes in the 8-bit array, 256 bytes, which would mean 256 different Pokemon, which there just so happens to be, because there's 190 regular Pokemon, and then there's some something like 66 glitch Pokemon, which roughly, there is roughly 206, 256 Pokemon, if there isn't exactly 256 Pokemon, I think there actually might be exactly 66 glitch Pokemon. You can't encounter them all, but you can get them all through different glitches like the remaining HP glitch, or the... Johto Guard glitch, or the, um, or using the glitch item 8F to reprogram the game. So, there are many ways of getting the glitch Pokemon, but certain ones are much easier than others because of the, um, because you can just encounter them using the Mew glitch. Oh, we can still walk through walls. That's meant to end when you walk into a building. Okay, let's walk out. Right, um... Turn them off. Walk in the building in there, we should be fine now. Nope, whoops. Yeah, we're good, okay. Right, so. The game will send out these glitch Pokemon if you, if you give the game the correct data to send out the glitch Pokemon. Usually, you will not encounter them. Like, through normal gameplay, you won't encounter them. You have to go out of your way to encounter all the glitch Pokemon, especially the ones that are locked away, locked out of the Mew glitch. So, when the game sends out the glitch Pokemon, it's basically getting a bunch of garbage data based on a load of factors. Most usually with the Mew glitch, it's your special stat. Sometimes with the old man glitch, it's your name. There's a lot of different factors that can correspond to which glitch Pokemon you actually manage to get. But... They're all kind of the, they're all kind of similar in a way. Like they all behave differently. Some of them are completely unique. Some of them are hybrids of other Pokemon, but they're usually all big glitchy squares with very unusual cries. They can learn glitch moves. They typically don't evolve. There are some that do, but typically they don't. And some of them like four four crash your game. And a lot of them do invert your sprites as well. So. That's about it, actually. <laughs> so. Oh wait, no, I never, I, did I say? I don't think I actually said, said how to get 4-4. Four, four. Um, you can get 4-4 four, four through the remaining HP glitch, using 8F to program the game to give it to you. You can use the remaining HP glitch, or you can do the Mew glitch in red and blue, and you'll get a Pokemon called, oh no, I did explain this. You get, you get the Pokemon called Arrow A, you transfer that into Pokemon Yellow, and that gives you a legitimate 4-4, which you can use in battle. It will not do anything, because if you transform into a Ditto, nothing happens. If you use it in a Trainer Battle, nothing happens. If you use it in a Wild Pokemon Battle, nothing happens. The only time something will happen is if somebody sends 4-4 out against you, and the only way that can happen, that we know of so far, without, you know, cheating or running arbitrary code and stuff, is to send it out in a Link Battle. But, I mean, even if this thing was usable, those stats are dreadful. <laughs> Although, on the plus side, you, you've got, like, you're not weak to anything with that glitch box typing. Like, that's got, well, then again, you've not got anything to hit it super effectively with. So, that's about it on 4-4. It's a very, it's a very interesting glitch Pokemon. I find it fascinating how it's, it's just so different from all the other glitch Pokemon, especially in yellow. And I wanted to add some more information to the world about it, I guess. <laughs> so, I've shown you how to encounter it, while also showing the Mew glitch, 
explaining the mirror glitch. I've shown you 4-4 what it does with your game, talked about the true cry, talked about the corrupt trainer it sends out, talked about what it does to your game and why it crashes. Showed it off in a trainer battle, showed it off against a ditto. Show what happens when you get into a wild encounter. I don't think I showed a trainer fight. Let's see if I can find a trainer that will fight me. And I'll send it out and just show you nothing really happens. The trainers here I think will absolutely destroy 4 4 there. That's the wrong button. Let's see if I can escape from Vermilion City maybe. Okay, let's see what this guy has to say. Right, okay, so he's corrupted the sprites obviously. Sends out Ekans, he's all reversed. Send it 4 4, eventually. Yep, this cries forever. Right, give you a second move, whatever that is. He hits me first. My defense is great, so I won't actually take that much damage. Um, I'm poisoned. I Did I use Bide? That's annoying. I can't tell what's going on because of. Because 4 4 is literally just a big black box. I can't tell what's going on whatsoever. Right, I'm sure it's. I have no idea what's happening. I can't read anything whatsoever. No. Okay. I've not hit him. I swear you can. F maybe I might be missing. That might be it. Let's try this. No, I'm dead. Okay. Okay, let's get revenge. Go, glitchy Mewtwo. You psychic. B.O.P. Etc. Revenge for 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, it's, it's not great. I can't even see what moves I was using. Oh, there we go. You only have one Pokemon. It's a bit lame. Look, his sprite's all messed up. No, that is not right. You're correct. That is definitely not right. Okay, so. As I'm a trainer battle, apparently nothing if you suck and can't press the right button to actually get him to do a move. I swear he... I swear, what is his moves? I getting Razor Wind and Payday. What? Okay, I never actually used Payday. I just used... Guillotine and Razor Wind over and over, and none of them did anything. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Right, so. I'm going to leave this here. Hopefully you enjoyed finding out a little bit about 4-4. If this was if this was in any way a good idea, I may talk about other glitch Pokemon as well. I might try and encounter Missing No. It's a bit of a nightmare in yellow version though, unless you get the the fossil forms of the ghost form. They're simple. But if this is at all interesting to anybody I might try and do more of these but that's it for now thank you all for watching sorry there's been nothing out in like forever but there should hopefully be some new stuff coming soon thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time goodbye